there was this incredible outpouring of grief. It's like this human symphony. I, I'll never forget it. It'll be with me, it'll be with me to my grave. The sound of that. It's, it's all I can hear when I look at this picture. It was just awful. In early 2003, photojournalist Philip Blenkinsop made a tragic discovery in the middle of the jungle, stumbling upon the CIA's long-abandoned secret army in the Zizomboom special zone of Laos. We were the first white faces that these people had seen since they were abandoned by the Americans. Um, they thought that those days of living in fear and being on the run had, had finished. 12,000 veteran fighters. Their women and children had been clashing with Laotian communist troops for the last 30 years. Now, they want out. That all we want in Laos is peace, not war. As far as American manpower in Laos is concerned, there are none there at the present time on a combat basis. is the most intensely bombed country in the history of air war. I honestly believe that we're trying to free people. We came from the sky and destroyed everything they owned, everything they loved, everything they held dear. became the progenitor for warfare in the 21st century. You want to know how wars are going to be fought in the rest of the 21st century? Look back at Laos. From 1960 to 1975, the CIA ran a clandestine sideshow to the Vietnam War in Laos. Long Cheng, a remote Laotian valley, became the agency's headquarters and the world's busiest airport, but was never marked on any map. Long Cheng was a very secret base and nobody knew about it. Nobody. Uh, now I don't even believe Congress knew about it at the time. More than 400 flights a day took off from Long Cheng, and the secret war grew into the largest operation in CIA history. For nearly 20 years, the Lao People's Democratic Republic isolated itself from the outside world after the war. All these years, the mountainous country kept its secrets. Laos is the only landlocked country in Southeast Asia. Due to its strategic location, Laos was used as a pawn in the strategic games between neighboring states, and more recently, between world powers. More bombs were dropped on the plain of jars in northern Laos than anywhere else on Earth. Before the war, some 50,000 people lived here. Many of them were members of the Hmong people, an ethnic hill tribe. According to ancient local legend, these jars were created by a race of giants who used them to brew rice wine for the celebration of an arduous but victorious battle. Decampment. The trail of the secret war leads into the Zaisambun special zone. Inside the zone lies the former CIA airbase of Long Cheng. This is our destination. We head now to Sai Sambun, uh, the space zone. Why they call it space zone? Because it means like the government have to take care special because they have problems. 
with the unorganized terrorism or a rubber attack the road and also the government put a lot of armies around many army camps you know I don't know them but I know their boss Susat Patrasi is a well-connected man and will take us into Long Chang. No outsiders have managed to reach the secret base since the end of the war in 1975. We pass the checkpoint unsearched. In the area, the scars of war are visible everywhere. Cluster bomb casings are used to support houses. Entire villages are built from war scrap. Forty years ago, Fred Brantman came to Laos as a humanitarian aid worker. Today, he returns to the place that changed his life forever, Tat Luang Pagoda. When I uh, pulled up to the pagoda, I would say I was just a kind of careless adventurer. Uh, no particular goal in life. I went into that pagoda, I, I talked to those people, and one hour later, I was a completely different person than the fellow who had entered the pagoda. And there were thousands of refugees just living like animals on the floor. And I walked up to the first one and we started talking. And he mentioned that he'd been bombed. I, I wouldn't have even thought to ask him. And I remember that I was in complete shock. Oh my God, I never heard of this and I'm living in Laos. Uh, and I realized that no one else outside of Laos had heard of this. There had been secret bombing going on for five years that had killed thousands of people, driven whole populations on the ground, and no one even knew about it. crazy because I didn't have a, a moral framework, a conceptual framework into which this fit. Yeah, I, you know, you, you read about something like this, you know the terrible things happen in the world, but when you're seeing it with your own eyes, and it's people that you like, people that you don't want to see them die, uh, there's an element of almost craziness that, that starts to arise, you know. This is the only eyewitness account of the massacres, the mass murder of civilians that occurred on the plain of Jars as a result of the air war. Without these drawings, there would be no record uh, other than, uh, of course, the testimony of the people. But it's, it's these drawings and the essays they wrote to accompany them that, that tells us what it was like to live under an air war, what it was like to see your beloved grandmother burned alive before your eyes. The stories of the refugees touched a nerve in Brantman, and he wanted to learn more about the secret bombing campaign. With his Lao friend Nung, he rode out to this refugee camp almost every day. Thirty years later, the camp has turned into a village, and most of the former refugees still live here. <laughs> It's a relative of his wife. Oh, <laughs> 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 
I interviewed over 2,000 people in both northern and southern Laos uh, from the Plain of Jars, from the Ho Chi Minh Trail area, and from other parts, and every single one told the same story. สมัยนั้นสงครามที่ตอนเฮาอยู่เวลานักกันยังน้อยอายุมงศึกษาสิบสี่ปีเนาะแล้วถ้าว่าจะไปเนี่ยขันยินเสี่ยงเขาเคส